Yeah. 
ਸਮਾਕਰੂ ਸ਼ਹਾ ਯਾਨੀ ਸ਼ਫੀਅ ਰੋਜ਼ੇ ਜਜ਼ਾ ਕਾ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਯਾਨੀ ਸ਼ਫੀਅ ਰੋਜ਼ੇ ਜਜ਼ਾ ਕਾ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਅੱਲਾਹ ਰੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਜਿਸ ਮੈਂ ਮੁਨਵਰ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਸ਼ੇ ਅੱਲਾਹ ਰੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਜਿਸ ਮੈਂ ਮੁਨਵਰ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਸ਼ੇ ਐ ਜਾਨ ਜਾਮ ਜਾਨ ਤਜੱਲਾਹ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਐ ਜਾਨ ਜਾਮ ਜਾਨੇ ਤਜੱਲਾਹ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਤੇਰੇ ਤੋਂ ਅਸਵੈਬ ਤਨਾਹੀ ਸਹਿਬਰੀ ਸਵੈਬ ਤਨਾਹੀ ਸਹਿਬਰੀ ਹੈਰਾਂ ਹੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਸ਼ਾਹ ਮੈਂ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਹੈਰਾਂ ਹੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਸ਼ਾਹ ਮੈਂ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਕਹ ਲੇਗੀ ਸਭ ਕੁਛ ਹੁਨ ਕੇ ਸਨਾ ਖਾਂ ਕੀ ਖਾਮੋਸ਼ੀ ਕਹ ਲੇਗੀ ਸਭ ਕੁਛ ਹੁਨ ਕੇ ਸਨਾ ਖਾਂ ਕੀ ਖਾਮੋਸ਼ੀ ਚੁੱਪ ਹੋ ਰਹਾ ਕਹਿ ਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਚੁੱਪ ਹੋ ਰਹਾ ਕਹਿ ਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਰਜ਼ਾਨ ਖਤ ਸੁਖਨ ਇਸ ਪੇ ਕਰ ਦਿਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਰਜ਼ਾਨ ਖਤ ਮੈਂ ਸੁਖਨ ਇਸ ਪੇ ਕਰ ਦਿਆ ਖਾਲਕ ਕਾ ਬੰਦ ਖਲਕ ਕਾ ਕਾ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਖਾਲਕ ਕਾ ਬੰਦ ਖਲਕ ਕਾ ਕਾ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਸਰਵਰ ਕਹੂੰ ਕਿ ਮਾਲ ਕੋ ਮੋਲਾ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ਬਾਗ ਖਲੀਲ ਕਾ ਗੁਲ ਜ਼ੇਬਾ ਕਹੂੰ ਤੁਝੇ ايم الجنه ونعيمها سعد لمن يصلي ويسلم ويبارك عليه صلى الله عليه ولما تم من حمله الشهران على مشهور الاقوال المرويه صلى الله عليه وفي بالمدينه المنوره ابو عبد الله اللهم صل وسلم عليه وكان قد اجتاز باخواله بني عدي من الطائفه النجاريه صلى الله عليه وما 
مکث فیہم شہرا سقیما یعانون سقمہو و شکوا اللہم صلی و سلم علی و لم ما تم من حمله على الراجع تسعة أشهر قمرية صلى الله عليه وآن للزمان أن ينجلي عنه صدا اللهم صل وسلم عليه حضر أمه ليلة مولده الشريف آسية ومريم في نسوة من الحضيرة القدسية صلى الله عليه وأخذها المخاد فولدته صلى الله عليه وسلم نورا يتلألأ السنة يا ربي صلي على محمد يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم يا ربي صلي على شافي علم شفع يا رب صلي على محمد يا رب صلي عليه وسلم يا رب صلي على محمد على الورى رتبة وأرفا يا رب صلي على محمد يا رب صلي
عليه وبارك عليه وعلى آله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم يا رحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسب الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه الحمد لله الذي هدانا بعبده المختار من دعانا إليه بالإذن وقد نادانا لبيك يا من دلنا وحدانا صلى عليك الله بارئك الذي بك يا مشفى خصنا وحبانا مع آلك الأطهار معدن سرك الأسماء فهم سفن النجاة حمانا وعلى صحابتك الكرام حماة دينك أصبحوا لولائه عنوانا صلى الله عليه والتابعين لهم بصدق ما حدا حاد المودة هيج الأشجانا صلى الله عليه والله ما ذكر الحبيب لدى المحب إلا وأضحى والها النشوانا أين المحبون الذين عليهم بذل النفوس مع النفائس هانا لا يسمعون بذكر طه المصطفى إلا به انتعشوا وأذهب رانا فاهتاجت الأرواح تشتاق اللقاء وتحن تسأل ربها الردوانا صلى الله عليه حال المحبين كذا فاسمع إلى سير المشفع وارهف الآذانا صلى الله عليه وانصت إلى أوصاف طه المجتبى واحذر لقلبك يمتلئ وجدانا يا ربنا صل وسلم دائما على حبيبك من إليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم
وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله لي بالمدينة أحباب إذا أحباب إذا نظروا إلي ولت همومي وانجلي الضرر وقائل لي ما تشتاق قلت له أشتاق أشتاق طيبة شوقا ليس ينحصر يا قائد الجو يا يا قائد الجو أنزلني 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 إذا لمعت إذا 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 لمعت لعينيك القبة الخضراء والحجر فوقفة الله فوقفة عند أبواب المدينة فوقفة عند أبواب المدينة لا 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 تبقي من الشوق مطويا ولا تذر هنا أقصد شباك سيدي 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 المصطفى واستغفر الله واستغفر الله حيث الذنب يغتفر يا رب صلي من جاءنا بالرسالة طه محمد وآله من كلمته الغزالة يا ربي صلي على النبي من جاءنا بالرسالة رسالة طه محمد
وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه نبأنا الله فقال جاءكم نور فسبحان الذي أنبانا صلى الله عليه والنور طاه عبده من به في ذكره عظمه منانا صلى الله عليه ورحمة المولى تأمل قوله فليفرح وقت به فرحانا صلى الله عليه مستمسكا بالعروة الوثقى ومؤتصما بحبل الله من أنشانا صلى الله عليه واستشعرا أنوار من قيل متى كنت نبيا قال آدم كان صلى الله عليه بين التراب وبين ماء فاستفق من غفلة عن ذا وكن يقضانا صلى الله عليه وأبر إلى أسرار ربي لم يزل ينقلني بين الخيار مصانا صلى الله عليه لم تفترق من شعبتين إلا أنا في خيرها حتى بروزي أنا صلى الله عليه 
خيار من خيار قد خرجت من نكاه الليله صلى صلى الله عليه طهره الله حماه اختاره وما براك مثله انسانا صلى الله عليه وبحبه وبذكره والنصر والتوقير رب العرش قد اوصانا يا ربنا صل وسلم دائما على حبيبك من اليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته لوشي فريا صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله وسلم عليك يا حبيب الله صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله وسلم عليك يا حبيب الله مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله محمد سيد كونين وساقلين محمد سيد كونين وساقلين محمد سيد القونين وثقلين والفارقين من نرب ومن نجم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق سلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ ما قاصدنا يا ربي خير الخلق كله مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله يا 
Ya Mustafa Khairul Wara Tere Jaya Koi Nai Kinnu Kawa Tere Jaya Ya Mustafa Khairul Wara Tere Jaya Koi Nai Tere Jaya Sona Nabi Labba Te Ta وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه هذا وقد نشر الإله نعوته في الكتب بيّنها لنا تبيانا صلى الله عليه أخذ ميثاق النبيين لما آتيتكم من حكمة إحسانا صلى الله عليه وجاءكم رسولنا لتؤمنون وتنصرون وتصبحون أعوانا صلى الله عليه قد بشروا أقوامهم بالمصطفى أعظم بذلك رتبة ومكانا صلى الله عليه وهو وإن جاء الأخير مقدم يمشون تحت لواء من نادانا صلى الله عليه يا أمة الإسلام أول شافع ومشفع أنا قد لا أتوانا صلى الله عليه حتى أناد ارفع وصل تؤت وقل يسمع لقولك نجم فخرك بانا صلى الله عليه ولواء حمد الله جل بيدي ولا أولا آتي أنا الجنان صلى الله عليه وأكرم خلق على الله أنا فلقد حباك الله منه حنانا صلى الله عليه ولسوف يعطيك فطرد جل من معت تقاصر عن عطاه رهانا صلى الله عليه بالله كر ذكر وصف محمد كيما تزيها أن القلوب الرانا يا ربنا صل وسلم دائما على حبيبك من إليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم 
وبارك عليه وعلى آله لما دنا وقت البروز لأحمد عن إذن من, من ما شاءه قد كان صلى الله عليه حملت به الأم الأمينة بنت وهب من, من لها على الإله ما كان صلى الله عليه من والد المختار عبد الله بن عبد المطلب رأى البرحان صلى الله عليه قد كان يغمر نور طه وجهه وسرى إلى الإبن المسون عيانا صلى الله عليه وهو ابن هاشم الكريم شهم ابن عبد مناف ابن قصي كان صلى الله عليه والده يدعى هكيما شأنه قد اعتلع عزز بذلك شانا صلى الله عليه واحفظ أصول المصطفى حتى ترى في سلسلات أصوله عدنانا صلى الله عليه فهنا ققف وعلم برفعه إلى اسماعيل كان لأبي معوانا صلى الله عليه وحينما حملت به آمنة لم تشك شيئا يأخذ النسوانا صلى الله عليه وبها أهات اللطف من رب السماء أقصى الأذى والحم والأحزان صلى الله عليه ورأت كما كجا ما علمت به أن المهيمن شرف الأكوان صلى الله عليه طهر من في بطنها فاستبشرت ودن المخاد فأطرئت ردوان سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم في كل لحظة أبدا أدد خلقي ورضا نفسي وزنة عرشي ومداد كلماتي وتجلت أنوار من كل للجهات فوقت ميلاد مشفع حانا صلى الله عليه وقبيل فجر أمرزت شمس الهدى ظهر الحبيب مكرما ومصانا صلى الله على محمد صلى الله على محمد صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك يا رسول الله صلى
how was your relationship with the Prophet? There is no other way or other road or path to succession except through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the different dimensions, you see, have given us an opportunity to gain proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the greatest ways of felicity, sa'ada, is through khidm, is through service. Serving fellow believers, serving mankind, trying your utmost best, or allowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to receive the gifts that he has prepared. Meaning, put yourself in a position that you receive the gifts, the tremendous opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his divine wisdom and his generosity and his mercy has allowed this ummah, the community of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to receive felicity through the service of others. Logically, this would not make sense if you were in a position where you could make a million pounds but you choose for that million pounds to be given to someone else. To what the eye can see, you're in a loss because you've lost out in a million pounds, is it not? You've passed it on to someone else. What's in it for you? But like in the deen and mateen, the sacred deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sacred way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is as such, the more you give, the more you receive. Depending upon your intention, remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, al mu'min khayrum min amalihi. That the intention of the believer is loftier, is better than the deed itself. We as the community of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as with the whole of mankind, we've just read in the Mawlid, Anta fil hashiri maladhun. So the whole of mankind is going to be brought into account by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the whole of creation is going to be brought into account by Allah azza wa jal. But when it comes to this community, the community of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our means for salvation will be in how did we treat others? What was our relationship with the rest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much did we sacrifice? This deen is based upon sacrifice in every sense of the word. The whole deen has been look into our tremendous history up until the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The noble Ahl al Bayt al the prophetic household, the Sahaba, the companions, the Tabi'een, the generation that came thereafter, Atba Tabi'een, and the generation that comes thereafter, and the Awliya and Salihin and the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friends of Allah azza wa they have only received what they received through the service of the creation of Allah. They have only received salvation and sa'ada, felicity, through their service of others. They were such people that they disregarded their own rights and they looked at the rights of others. If they, if they were in a position to give something, they would not even hesitate to give because they knew in the name of the one I am giving it in, he returns it in such a way, in such a manner that is beyond him. They had that yaqeen, that certainty. One of the signs of the sa'ah, of the hour that is to come, is that there will only be a group of people, a handful of people left upon the realms of this earth who will be serving the deen of the Prophet selflessly. Sincerely, purely for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. Allah make us amongst those people, Ya Rabbi. And the vast majority will be only doing what they do for their own benefit. What's in it for me? What do I receive? Do I receive name? Do I receive fame? Do I receive a flock? Do I receive people coming towards me? Do I receive a building? Do I receive a car? Do I receive a title? All of these matters about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu man alayha faan. Kullu man alayha faan. And Allah has spoken the truth. 
But when it comes to the elite, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses, remember, we do not serve the deen in any sense of the word, except that Allah has chosen us for this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for you, He allows you to partake in these gifts that He has prepared by allowing you to serve the deen of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our pious predecessors were as such. Literally, when they would give with the right, the left wouldn't even know. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is as such. You know, Shah Imam Muhammad Razaqa, Fazil Barilvi alayhi rahmatu wa ridwan, when he wrote, Vah, kya judo karam hai, shahibat ha tera. Nahi sunta hi nahi mangne wala tera. Kya judo karam hai, shahibat ha tera. Not, kya judo karam tha. La, kya judo karam hai. E shahibat ha tera. Nahi sunta hi nahi mangne wala tera. We, as the community of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, foremost we must realize that we will only be successful depending upon our relationship with him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. And if that relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, is unstained in every sense of the word, has no blemishes in it, has no rips in it, there's not a corner missing, all the threads are in place. Everything is khair in that matter. Everything is good in that matter. And believe you me, success is yours. Success is yours. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wa sallam. And how do we bring a smile to the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wa sallam? Serve the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wa sallam. Believe you me, this is the closest way, the quickest way, the firmest way, the best way to earn the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger. By serving the community of the Prophet ﷺ. In today's day and age, I leave you with this thought, inshallah, then hand over to our teacher, Fadilat Sheikh Muhammad Burhan, Hafidhahullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and preserve him. Make the ummah benefit through him, Ya Rab. I leave you with this thought. In today's day and age, you know, if you're given an opportunity to perform a deed, any deed, any deed whatsoever, yes, in the eyes of mankind, it may be a minor deed, it may be something extremely small and irrelevant. You may not even think twice about it. But if you're given the opportunity, take it with both hands, not with both hands, your whole body. Take it completely, take it, take it. Such as pouring a glass of water for someone, holding the door open for someone, passing a microphone to someone, smiling at someone, listening to someone's concern, being there for someone. Be the first to give salam. Be the first to give salam. The greatest reward is in there. Is it not? The best towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who give salams first and put their hands forward first. Be careful of COVID. Sanitize and what have you. The point being, we see these deeds as small and irrelevant. But you know the saying in Urdu, they call, I'm not an Urdu speaker. I've learned the language so I can communicate better, inshallah. And if I make a mistake, forgive me. Pardon me. Katara, katara, johena, usse phir dhariya banta hai. Katara, katara, phir dhariya banta hai. Aap samaj rahe Every drop, one drop after the other, it eventually turns into an ocean. You know when the well-known poet, he said, Neki kar dhariya me dhal. What does this mean? means perform a good deed and put it into the ocean. Meaning what? Forget about it and lose it. Lose it meaning hide it. So nobody else knows about it. The ocean is vast and deep and profound. If you put a pebble into the ocean, it goes so deep. Is there anyone who can find that pebble then? No. That's your good deed. Put it into the ocean. Perform good deeds and put them into that ocean, the ocean of mercy, the ocean of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be praised. We're going to be hearing from our teachers and the teachers of our teachers and our spiritual guide and murabbi Sayyidina al-Habib Umar bin Muhammad bin Salim bin Hafiz bin Shaykh Abu Bakr bin Salim. One of the inheritors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our day and age, both 
from his progeny, his spiritual inheritor as well as a physical inheritor from the children of Sayyidina, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his benefit through him. We're also going to be hearing from our Shaykh and our teacher, Sayyidina Al Habib Musa Qadim Al Sagaf, Habib Qadim, inshallah Azza wa Jal. Allah make his benefit through them. The Ahl al Bayt al Nububa, the prophetic household. And inshallah to speak about them. Habib Allah, 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 Fadl Zabna Zainab. Alhamdulillah, we're very fortunate to have a Sayyid enjoy his life in Tariq and the adab of being in the presence of the shiuch, especially in this day and age, in the digital age, is that we are present before them as though they are in front of us. So we maintain the same adab. Those who are at home, who are viewing, should maintain the same adab. Those who are present here, likewise, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not allow the distance of space to be a barrier between us taking from him and benefiting from him and showing our good manners towards him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward us and benefit us as though we are directly in front of him, in front of his gaze, inshallah. Whilst we're waiting, inshallah, as uh, Imam Khalid, hafizahullah, has mentioned the Ahl al-Bayt, we'll recite a short manqabat in praise of the Ahl al-Bayt of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam until Sayyid al-Habib Umar, inshallah, takes over. Inshallah, if everybody can join in together. لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله جود علينا لا إله إلا الله جود علينا إن في الجنة نهر من لبن إن في الجنة نهر من لبن لعلي وحسين وحسن لعلي وحسين وحسن لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله جود علينا حب أهل البيت فرض عندنا حب أهل البيت فرض عندنا وبهذا الحب لا نخشى الميحان وبهذا الحب لا نخشى الميحان لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله Okay, this is Alhamdulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alhamdulillah, and the the Blessings, the vast blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was extended for us all this great opportunity to sit in the blessed presence of our Imam and our Shaykh Sayyidina Habib Muhammad. Sayyidina al Mawla subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Mullah wa Karamah, and you got us lana, and he got to Al Hatayal Gizilat, Wal Inayat, Wal Rihayat, the Hadur al Akhabar, and the Hadurun, the Majal Sir Ilmi, the Dikri, 
وما انكم من المجالس التي يذكر فيها النبي المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that through this great blessing that Allah continues to bestow his great spiritual gifts upon us and open open these great blessings upon us in the presence and the company of the Akabah, the great giants and the masters of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah causes that blessed prayers that are always answered to radiate over us. And through these great perpetuating blessings, these continual openings and awakenings of these blessings that take place in the gatherings of the people of Allah. The great masters of this way, we simply we ask Allah that Allah continues to, for these openings to take place in these gatherings. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he, through virtue and the, the blessing of this great gathering, that Allah enters happiness, ease, the light into the blessed and noble heart of the Prophet. And that which is unfolded by this uh, spreads out over, over all of you that are in tenants ten of this blessed gathering. <laughs> We were informed about all the great blessings, those which were apparent and those which were hidden in the attendance and being present in such gatherings. When we talk about the blessed description of the Prophet when we talk about his blessed life, his sacred biography, and all of the blessings which unfold in exposing ourselves to such gatherings. <laughs> Amongst the greatest of these blessings which unfold to all those that are present in such gatherings, the gatherings are like the gathering you are currently participating in, is that which the Prophet informed us of himself. And he said that the lights of these gatherings, that the angels frequent and descend upon them, and tranquility and serenity and peace uh, unfold amongst the people of these great blessed gatherings. <laughs> So consider and ponder for a moment that were you to enter into some a gathering or a, a meeting where people have come together and it's under the watchful gaze or it's under the supervision, you could say, of somebody that has some kind of uh, fame. The notoriety, the, the personality that is well known within this worldly realm. Welcome. Well so consider this and now look at the nature of the gathering that we're in. That we're in a gathering which is gazed over and watched upon, supervised by the Prophet himself and all the blessed, blessed people who follow in his way. <laughs> So the lights of this particular gathering has a, has a specific and unique gaze from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from his Prophet directly because of the people that established this gathering, because of the great masters 
that, that, that initiated these meetings. This is the great and complete inheritance of the Prophet and the great Imam al Haddad. When he said in his demands, his compilation of his blessed poetry in reference to Arafah, so when he was he was stood there, that this is a this is a space which is gazed over, which is watched over, which is cared for by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala directly. And similarly, these kind of gatherings, the likes of the gathering which are trying to be present in, they're gazed over and they're prepared. They're arranged, they're organized, and they're supervised by these great people. So no, no doubt they're gazed upon by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. the likes of us in speaking, we don't say just really in the presence and the singing of our Shaykh and our teacher, Shaykh al Habib Umar, rather in it's a multiple presence. There's a presence of the heart, there's a presence of the soul, there's a presence of the sirf. And it's not for the likes of us to be speaking in this gathering. However, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He can grant us through His blessing and through His grace that we enter into this great ocean of the prophetic inheritance of Wirat and Muhammadiyah, that we all enter into this ocean with them and by them that our, our sins are looked over and our shortcomings and our transgressions are wiped away. <laughs> Similarly, as we ask for, by speaking in their presence, that we, we do it in seeking forgiveness, we also have a good opinion of Allah, that Allah allows it to enter to the spiritual channels and connect our hearts to them, that that which unfolds and flows over their heart and over their blessed minds and their blessed soul, that similarly we can grasp and we can attain something of this light something of this beauty and something of this knowledge which pours over them. And similarly we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forgives us through this. consider very well and ponder on the reality that this is an incredibly rare and blessed opportunity. It is not every day that somebody has the opportunity and the blessing 
and the honor of being set in the presence of the likes of these grand human beings. We should consider this well. This is not something which everybody is given, and it's not something which occurs and is accessible to every time and place. We should consider this well, that the likes of me and all of you, when we sit in the presence of the, these, these akhav, of these great people amongst the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we should uh, we should ask Allah that that which pours over them flows through to us from their heart, through their mind, through their soul. This is the true benefit, and this is truly being present and honoring the blessing of this gathering. <laughs> And this is, we show gratitude. What else can we do except show absolute thanks and gratitude that Allah opened up this door of receiving through such heart. And we, we, there's no better place to place all of our woes and all of our challenges at the feet of these great masters. <laughs> You know, people of the soul, people whose reality is the soul, take our souls to enter into the presence of the Prophet so we ask Allah and we say there is nothing else more that can be said except to ask Allah for tamam and ni'mah, a completion of this blessing that we're able to truly benefit, truly receive, truly gain in the presence of our dear Shaykh Sayyid al Habib which be very aware and very present. Every word that comes from the blessed lips of Sayyid al Habib, every prayer which he asks Allah for, every movement, every silence, everything is a vast blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to perceive this, we need to understand this, we need to internalize this and the magnitude of this great blessing of what we're literally experiencing in this very moment. And even beyond this, we should be perceptive and understand that every time we meet is a renewed or a brand new expression and manifesting of that gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the people of Allah don't remain stagnant. The people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly ascending, constantly raising, and we're experiencing that which flows off of them when we sit in their company. <laughs> We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us and veils us from any expressions of the divine wrath that such that we be veiled or barred from truly experiencing, from truly participating, from truly gaining being present in these, these gatherings, that which in reality we're all deserve it of. We're, we're deserved because of our shortcomings, because of our failures, because of our slips. <laughs> And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that through the great blessing and the, and the barakah of this gathering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectifies our states, blesses us, protects us to the rank of the one of, of Mawla Bilal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we've only spoken with the intention of gaining from these precious moments in the presence of the people of this great station. Um, 
achter zo achter mij. So we'll be joining you inshallah straight after Maghrib.
ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك من خلقك وخيرتك من بريتك نسألك أن تصلي وتسلم عليه. We ask you that you send your peace and salutations upon him. أفضل الصلوات والذكر. The purest and most beautiful salutations and greeting. وعلى آله المطهرين. On his purified family. وأصحابه الغبر الميامين القداء. So no noble radiant leaders amongst his sahab. وعلى من وعلىهم فيك. And all of those that hear them were loyal to you. Through him, all of them with beautiful spiritual, spiritual excellency till the day of meeting. Upon his forefathers and his brothers from amongst the prophets and the sadat, sadat, the leaders of Egypt. وعلى آلهم وأصحابهم والتابعين. On all of their families and all of those that followed him. And all of those that follow them, and upon the angels which are all close, and all of the righteous slaves of God, and upon us with them and in them, and upon with, with them and through them, and upon us with them and through them, and he is the most generous, 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 the amount of everything that he created, the amount of everything with the entirety in the heavens and everything within the earth, everything that Book contains and within his book. The amount of the everything and every everyone. In the amount of his creation and the his content was in the beauty of his throne and the method of his blessed words. Have your heart become present. Turning to the Lord that created every one of you. مستشعرين من نتكو عليكم. Feeling the great and vast blessing which is bestowed upon you. 
وانتم في مجمعين يتصلوا بتثبيت اساس الاستجابه. For you are all now in the presence of a gathering which is connected to the realities of founding the reality of istiqamah, steadfastness. And istiqamah, the steadfastness, is the greatest of all miracles. That any human being or jinn could ever be ennobled with or graced with on the face of this earth. And this is in reality uh, the, the realization of true slavehood and devotion. And its manifestation, its reality, the, the way it manifests, is to adhere to that which you've been commanded to do and abstain and refrain from that which you've been commanded to abstain from. يتصل مجالسكم وما فيها بتثبيت أساس الاستقامة لأن سيد الأهل الاستقامة والإمام محمد. Your gatherings are connected to the reality of istiqama, of steadfastness, because these are gatherings which are connected to the Imam, the true leader of the realities of istiqama, Sayyidina Muhammad. So anybody else that has any reality of istiqama in accordance to that the reality of this steadfastness, so too is their closeness to him. The more that one connects to the realities of one's faith and one's resolve, one's yaqeen, one's certitude. This is the reality or the foundation of that which he came with and that which he taught us. So us coming together and congregating upon this reality of istiqama and faith, this is coming together in increasing those realities. And the uniqueness of this coming together, the particular reality of us coming together upon this is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator in the heavens and the earth. He was the one that called us to do this. So he is the true example, the ultimate perfect archetype, not to some kind of philosophizing, of thinking of any any intellectual or anyone else on the face of the earth, rather by the the, the, the ordaining of the Lord of the heavens and the earth. For this reason, we witness no other reality other than when we see people that diverge and move away from this great example, from this great leader. And they diverge towards evil, and wickedness, and sin. Other than this, is a form or an expression of them being cut, of them being severed from their following of this way. And there will be no true solution, no true 
problem, problem solved, no tribulation lifted, except with a true and an authentic movement back to him and a return to that one which the Creator chose. فأنتم بالكتابكم حول في وسيطة المولي بعلدون شكل العالم بالله. So all of you now, in your congregating and celebrating this blessed moment, you are now the means to solving and resolving all of the problems throughout the earth. وَمَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ مِنْكُمْ سَيَرَى أَنَّ مَا سَيَحْتُلُ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ أَنْوَاعِ الْإِسْلَاحَاتِ وَالتَّغْيِيرِ إِلَى الْأَفْضَلِ كُلُّهُمْ نَتِيجَةٍ للاتفاق حول هذا المصطفى والعمل بما بعثه به الخالق إليه. And those amongst you which live a long life, live for many years, you will see the manifestation of all of these things being rectified throughout the world, throughout the earth, amongst the ummah, and people turning and re-engaging and adhering to the way of the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أما في الآخرة كله. من الأولين والآخرين ومنهم وكافرهم يوجنوا بهذه الحقيقة لا بل يعاينها معاينة. And as for the akhirah, as for the next life, every single being will testify to this reality. They won't just see it, rather they'll experience it and taste the reality of this. ملوكهم وما ملوكهم. All of the kings and rulers and all of those which were enslaved and ruled over. Those which were rich and those which were poor. The Arabs, the non-Arabs, men and women, Eastern and Western, the first of them and the last of them. Every single one of them desperately hopes to be close to that prophet. So in your celebrating, commemorating of his Mawlid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, من بس لما سمعت من الكلام عنه في كلمة السيد هذا. من سمع الله which you listen to and you you this you heard on the words of حبيب هذا. أنتم بكل ذلكم تتحيئون حيئة لحسن المال وعقب الدار ونعم عقب الدار. With all of this or through all of this you are preparing yourselves for a beautiful transition. Into the greatest of endings and the greatest of meetings. Amongst, uh, alongside that which you attain in the rectification and the healing of your souls and the solutions to all of the problems on earth. From whence the Creator of the Earth uh, de designated this and defined this, and He is the, the, say, the speaker that says, Subhanahu wa Taala, indeed Allah will not change a peoples until they change that which is in their own selves. So that which you attain in these blessed gatherings, in increasing the realities of faith and reverence. Love. What was in the egos and the souls of human beings starts to transform. You will attain an ability and a power and a strength to face those people that, 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 and, and to change that which is in their, their innermost reality. So through this, all of the, the, the circumstances and situations around you begin to transform. The realities of pr truly preparing to change that which exists around you is in connecting and living and tasting the realities of the beauty of that chosen. Because he is the, the one that had most exquisite and perfect 
Sahib al Jamali al And he is the person of exquisite perfection, of beauty in his perfection. So his perfection is beauty, immeasurable perfection. And his beauty is perfect. And in this station, there's nothing else. Creation, except for him. For those which go close from amongst the angelic realm, the people, the great states of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have some experience of this perfection and of this beauty, but all of them are completely incomparable to the reality of the perfection, the beauty. So this isn't just a question that they are lower in ranks. Rather, any perfection and beauty flows from him. Because he is the source. These are just atoms which spread forth from his perfect essence. How cute, how amazing is his beauty. Amongst who are you gathering around? Who are you following? You're following the command of whom in this reality? So the, the, the fruits of these gatherings, the effects of these gatherings, the greatness is in accordance to the greatness of the one subhanahu wa ta'ala that chose him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst from from around which you are now gathering. So make sure your hearts are present as we said in the beginning of our speech. That you expose yourself to be receptive to the divine gaze of the one who changes and flips hearts. And then you retain a vast portion of his pardon and his forgiveness. And from his bounty and his compassion. From his divine closeness and divine knowledge, and from his love and from his contentment. There is nothing, neither on earth nor in the heavens, which is greater than this is being, which is being conveyed before you. Through these realities, you are able to attain for those in Aan, the pinnacle of paradise. But even if you had for those in Aan in your hands, you would not be able to attain these realities through it. All of you who are commemorating and gathered in the Kaaba, orientating to Muhammad, you are you are circumambulating and going around this reality. You will find nothing except compassion. And you will not find anything except beauty. And you will not find anything except you will not find anything so beautiful. The Lord of all beauty, great are you. So the likes of him in all of creation I could never find. We had the sunnah to tahayyuna lihamil khayri bin umma. With this high, celestial, noble reality, you prepare yourselves to become those that carry this beauty and greatness to the end. 
Were it not for these blessed hearts, which gravitated and circled round this figurative Kaaba of the Prophet in their following, in their emulation, in their being like him, were it not for these perfected hearts in following him, you would not find the lifting and the gradual the relenting and the solutions to all of these problems which you find now globally, globally some of which to refer to as this current academ the epidemic of Corona, call it what you will, were it not for the presence of the realities of these hearts and these souls, you would not see these things being alleviated and being removed. We, we prefer and we to, to prepare ourselves to expose ourselves to these realities and giving my third means of giving charity and doing good deeds and so on and so forth. And that which is connected in regards to, you could say, the, the physical means, those things which are tangible and physical, those things will follow from those alongside, behind those spiritual realities with that rooted. And we've we spoke in a, in a previous time about the reality of leave those people that don't believe in Allah for the last day to take on their means, whatever means they want to take and engage. Let them let them go forth in that which they're doing. But we root ourselves in the means which are legislated and advised to us by Allah and His Prophet and consider and watch carefully because you'll see to whom the true result goes back to. And what we witness, and this is a factual reality on the ground, is that in those lands in which there was a complete dependency on what we could call outward means, purely relying on the outward means. But what was interesting is we noticed that the various cases and the things that the way people suffer was far more than that which we experience in the reality on the ground here. And what we noticed here is that it was a gentle passing of this uh, test, but there was no real uh, detrimental effect in the society. <laughs> Likewise, how do you explain the reality that took place in those lands which prevented people coming together in prayer and in congregation? But more often than not, or typically, the things spread far faster and more far worse than those lands which, which told the line of the divine legislation where people were allowed to come together in an appropriate manner and fulfill their prayers and congregate in the remembrance of God. How do you explain this? 
So it's only appropriate that anyone with any intelligence starts to consider this and and uh, contemplate upon the reason behind this. How do you explain all this? And in the end, those people return back to gathering together and congregating that which was done in the beginning of the so if this is an end for them, this is the beginning for us. And it perhaps may be that we which would advise in some of the lands and globally and particularly in Europe that from the very essence of curing these problems is congregating. وذكرنا هذا الأمر الأمر الجانبي المتصل بالحديقة التي نتحدث عنها. We mention this in passing to this in many ways this side issue so we can really go back and focus into the essence of that which we've been began talking about. With the essence of the understanding of that which Allah has bestowed upon you and ennobled you with being Muslims and having the reality of Islam, stand forth, stand up to the reality of this and fulfill its duties. Have a humble and uh, integrity and pride in the way you stand forth as a Muslim, in the way you in your conduct, in the way you behave in yourself, in your family, and all those around you. And bear in your hearts the, this beauty and carry it and spread it to all those people around you. Don't be saddened or hurt by any foul speech or aggressive language of those people which curse you. And don't respond to a foul interaction by some kind of foulness from you. From the beauty that the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the heart of the Prophet is that he said that do not respond with a bad, a bad deed in a bad way. Respond in that which is better and more beautiful. Two realities that when you congregate around and implement in your lives, you become a source of transforming the world and everything around you. And yet he was your team, absolute firmness and rootedness in faith, and true patience. And you will retain the true leadership that does on earth. You will connect the realities of the leadership of the Sahaba and the, the, the giants amongst the noble and purified family of the Prophet and the Imam of this leadership, the realities of leadership of all the Prophets to the, the Barakah of the Imam of all of them, all the, the reality of leadership. Your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that which he inspired to him. And we made you an imma which is leaders. You command or you guide through our command. When you were when you were patient and in our signs you had absolute certainty. Two affairs. Two descriptions, says anything. Two foundations, patience and yaqeen, certitude. When you were patient, when they were patient, and when they had certainty in our signs. So have certainty and be patient. 
الرواسل لأنهم بين مدينة Standing up to the reality of following Wang Faru Mandika and be of the source of benefit to the extent of which you're able to do so. So, some of those which are close to you and those which are distant and relinquish your heart, see your heart of anything other than the likes of your Lord who is dead, you should then give them up with an increasing desperate yearning to the companionship and the closeness of your prophet. And you will see the realities of his banners and flags waving throughout the earth. And anybody that, that wants to truly attain the realities of this council, let them be hasty, hasty to practicing what they've heard. Sleep or hasten to the forgiveness from your Lord. And paradisal abodes, the extent of which is the expansiveness of the heavens and the earth. Prepare those who are tough. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah for the manifestation coming about of these great celebrations of Mustafa chosen. May Allah cause the true benefit uh, to, to be multiplied and spread. And everybody enters into the reality of this, those that people that take care and help facilitate and serve in establishing and maintaining mosques, places of knowledge. And we have particularly in this, this time, with these days, a unique opportunity to help serve and facilitate in some of the reparations which are taking place at the resting place of Prophet Huda in those days. So may Allah accept for anyone that is, is putting forth themselves forth in serving and participating. And may Allah establishes in the realities of the station of those that fulfill their oaths and those that do this with Ihsan. Every single one of us should sacrifice everything they can in accordance to their, abil their abilities. May Allah expand and open your hearts. May Allah bless all those that help facilitate and, and establish this gathering of yours. And cause the, the, the reciprocal bounty of His grace. Over Manchester and over England and over Europe and over everybody on earth in the East and the West. Because the Lord of every single one of these lands and every place on earth is the same Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that sent Muhammad. And his khayr, his beauty, and his goodness spreads over and encompasses all of them. As the Lord said, I mean, we did not send you to save us mercy to all the worlds. Yeah. Allah accepts us from them and make it a, a means or a, a, an hour of divine glances upon you and connections, Muhammadan connections, through which we ascend and transcend to the highest levels of proximity. And through this, our every intention and every agenda becomes rectified and purified. And through this, our innermost realities in our hearts become purified.
through it, all of our effects, which anyone knows, which and how we become rectified to deflect and to cast aside any harmful matter which may be and through it, when the doors of opening and release and respite be opened in this last month of the year, we will, of course, drink from the most felicitous and beautiful of glasses, the glass of true love. And we become inwardly prepared and for the to receive an end companionship of the prophets he's done in the Barzakh and upon the last day. Alhamdulillah, and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gathers us and who's allowed us to praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and to benefit from those who are the inheritors of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam and his representatives in this day and age. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ni'mah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit and to actualize the wisdom and the knowledge and the advice that we were given. And Sayyid al-Habib Umar, he was mentioning about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with these gatherings and how these gatherings are the foundation of our success and the solution of the problems that we see in the world. Because the solution of these problems lie in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And so these gatherings in which we praise him and we learn about him and we increase in closeness and proximity to him are a, a contribution towards resolving the issues that we see around us. And as Sayyid al-Habib Umar, he mentioned about how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and how he is the master of everybody. He is the ultimate master. And there is nobody that is worthy of being followed from the Arabs and the non-Arabs, from the East and the West, from the beginning till the end except the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. And this reality will be witnessed by people with their very eyes on the Day of Judgment. People will see this reality. But we make dua that we are allowed to see this reality in this world before the hereafter. And I say that Habib Umar, he mentioned that one of the things and two things particularly that we need to cling to by which we can spread benefit to those around us first and foremost is our own steadfastness on the path of Islam and patience. These two things are immense and very important. And once we inculcate and we establish those things within ourselves, we will see the spreading of the blessings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam within our proximity through us. And as Sayyid al-Habib Umar said that everybody who is hearing these words should strive towards actualizing them and benefiting those that surround them. And so this is not a time of delay. This is not a time of thinking and procrastinating and delaying spreading the benefit. And the blockage or the barrier in that, that benefit spreading is ourselves. If we take to the means, which is steadfastness and staying upon the straight path, and we are patient and we show good character, then the, 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 the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the light of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will surely spread. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to benefit from these beautiful words 
and Allah rewards all of those who facilitated for us to be in the presence and listen directly to the words of a Sayyid al-Habib Umar Hafizahullah, who undoubtedly is one of the most elect and one of the closest of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this day and age, and one who most resembles and carries the inheritance and the responsibility given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ameen ya rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi ya tayyibin ya tahirin wa sahabati ghurin mayameen wa man tabi'ahum bi isanin ila yawmidin ma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be praised as Fadilut al-Shaykh Muhammad Burhan Hafizullah mentioned who well, Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the opportunity to hear the words of Sayyidina al-Habib Umar bin Hafiz bin Shaykh Abu Bakr bin Salim and Sayyidina al-Habib Qadim al-Saggaf Hafizahullah. These individuals who genuinely carry the realities of the Muhammadan reality and by hearing their words and acting upon the advice, rather it's a command given to us. For those who understand, they understand. So it's a command for us to act upon the words that are given by the Salihin, the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a means for our own felicity and success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be praised and we can't praise him enough as it is his right who has allowed us to sit in the best of places in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst the best of people fellow believers and gaze upon the face of the elite amongst the best and as Sheikh Burhan Hafidhullah mentioned earlier on this evening that we can't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for allowing us to partake in a gathering where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed our hearts to be connected to the hearts of those upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night pours his blessings. And their ranks are constantly being raised, as Habib Qadim said, the likes of Habib Umar. The rank and the status of such individuals as time passes, their ranks and the status is being raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, lakal hamdu kullu ya rab, wa lakal shukru kullu ya rab, wa lakal mannu fadlan, wa anta rabbuna haqqan, wa nahnu abidu garikkan ya rab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to partake in these blessings, these blessed gatherings, wherever gatherings are being established in the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. We say to each other regularly that wherever you hear of a gathering of the Mawlid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, flock to it. Sayyidina al-Habib Umar bin Hafiz very recently said, if only you knew how much the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, loves you and cares about you, you would crawl upon your knees to give salam to him. If only we knew what it means to be from the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi move away from false argumentation and move towards him the truth this is what's needed in the ummah today is it not move away from false argumentation from this theater from this drama that's enveloping many people especially in our lands that's occupying our hearts and our minds and our time where there's real work that needs to be done there's real khidmah that needs to be done. As time goes by and as time passes, how do we answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for falling into a state of ghafla, heedlessness, where that time we could have spent sending salawat on the Prophet, establishing gatherings, serving the ummah, but we allowed ourselves to be engulfed in false argumentation, which are nothing but about egos. They're nothing except egos. Is pleasing people's egos. Ah, is polishing people's nafs. That's all it is. Move away, khullan. Brethren, move away from it. Move away from it. Serve the deen. Spend your time learning the deen. Spend your time gaining proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this time that we waste, that is wasted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us into account for it. You spent this time 
discussing certain problems and issues that had nothing to do with me and you or anyone in reality. They were all about what? Name and fame and glory. Whereas Muslims were dying. Muslims were starving. And this global community that we're in. We prayed Salatul Dhuhr in Leicester and we prayed Asr here. Look how close. Think about this. Today you could pray Salatul Fajr in the UK and back home in Africa, in Malawi. You can pray Salatul Isha with Jama'ah. It's a, it's a small world. The world is small. It's a global village. When we say Muslims are dying globally, though literally it may be thousands of miles away, in reality it's very close to us. It's very close to us. The Ummah needs serving. Are you going to allow yourself to be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve the community of his beloved? But we weren't fortunate enough to live in the time of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam or Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam or Sayyidina Shu'ayb alayhi salam or Sayyidina Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam alayhi salam. But Allah make us amongst those people about whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam said in which means that they have only heard about me and they've fallen in love with me and they yearn for me. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said what? I yearn for them. They yearn for me. You know, singing about him, establishing gatherings in his name, serving people in his name, giving food to people in his name, smiling at one another in his name. This is what? This is yearning for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His companions then asked him, are we not those people? Are we not those people who you yearn for? You're my companions. Those are people who are in love with me. They are my lovers. Allah make us amongst those people. Insha ya Rabb. If we are true to the Prophet though we didn't physically live in their times, Allah gives us opportunities to serve them even today. Are we going to serve the Prophet? Inshallah. Allah allow us to do this. We're going to have a short video now, Inshallah. The gatherings are coming towards its end. And Inshallah, the blessings are at the end. I urge all of you to stay till the end, Inshallah. Uh, you know, as they say, especially up, you know, in North England, they say things like, the night is young. We're young as well, Inshallah. Say Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. So the night, inshallah, we're not going to take too much of your time. We have a video now, inshallah, from Qali Bilal, hafizahullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him, preserve him. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used him to serve the deen. Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Make the ummah benefit through him. Every year. We'll have a video by Sheikh Bilal. Please listen to this video carefully, inshallah. The people of this uh, blessed region start to become excited and ready themselves for this great festivity and these are peoples that only celebrate that which is sacred and that which is meaningful the people of purpose the purpose of Sheikh Musa Musa pen found the one who was translating for Habib and is speaking about the project that Qari Bilal is involved in inshallah when we get over the technical issue then we'll be able to view the video correctly and properly, inshallah, and understand what's being said, inshallah. Whilst we're waiting for the video, just a brief uh, but very important note, this particular project, uh, it's being governed by the Habaib themselves. There's no specific individual who is looking after this project, but all of the Habaib are. All of our Akabirin, our elders, they are looking after this project and they've, alhamdulillah, given certain tasks to certain individuals. So please listen to this video, watch this video, listen to it, inshallah, and partake in it, inshallah. Every year, the people of this 
flesh of legion start to become excited and ready themselves for this great festivity and these are a peoples that only celebrate that which is sacred and that which is meaningful the people of purpose the purpose of people of depth and they gather together and prepare and have these ceremonies to uh, bring about this excitement this readiness and it's for, for one reason for the visitation of the blessed resting place of a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an entire surah an entire chapter in the Quran is mentioned after him is mentioned in his honor and it talks about him and his plight was with his people so the people of this blessed region they go and they commemorate his effort, his plight, his dawah in calling people to the realities of Tawheed. None of us had the opportunity to be around his Prophet Hud and serve him. Whilst we pray that we, we, we would have been those that believed in him, but we can't serve him until now. If we have the opportunity to know that the, the Anbiya, the Prophets as we know in the Hadith, are alive in their, in, in their grapes. They're alive, there's a consciousness, there's a life which is greater than this life of the dunya, this worldly, coarse, harsh, physical existence which we, that, which we inhabit. The people of this blessed region understand the significance of what they're doing. This is something which has a global impact, whether we're aware of it or we're not. The people of this region would go uh, to this to this blessed site and they would raise their hands and pray for the ummah, pray for the lifting of the calamities and the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations which is before them. the ummah, the men, the women, the children, people in strife in this land and that land. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to really start to reflect and meditate upon these meanings and understand the magnitude of that which is this, this offering which has been put, put, put forth before us and not to delay in how we can contribute in doing something which will have a profound effect not only in this religion or in this region rather but within the entire globe and not something which is specific to this time but something which will have an impact on our eternity imagine the, looking at the face of Prophet Hud salam, and you are one of those people on Yom al Qiyamah that put forth that which they could do and served and helped in the building of this great project. The edifice of the inward, the spiritual reality of this place has been established long, long ago and has been maintained year after year. But now we need people that can help serve in facilitating for the mass crowds that are coming in order to benefit. Every single person that attends, you'll have the opportunity to gain something of that reward. This is something which is deeply meaningful. It's something which has a very clear purpose that you can serve to, to build and grow the edifice and the structure of this sacred site. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all enabling grace and the ability, the tawfiq, to really understand the magnitude of what we've been called towards and allow and grant us a means and a, to facilitate the way to participate. Alhamdulillah, we have with us, I didn't uh, notice him earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me, Fadilut al-Shaykh Muhammad Nizal Baksh Ashrafi Hafidhullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and preserve him, uh, a very young but vibrant and inshallah influential scholar of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in London, and mashallah tabarakallah, I consider him to be my teacher, though he's going to deny it, but I consider him to be my teacher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us benefit from our teachers, Ya Rabbil Alameen. <coughs> Nabi Allah Hood project, as we just heard from Sheikh Mus'ab Penfound, 
the resting place of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. And it's in dire need of restoration. And as the Shaykh reminded us, for every single person that goes there, inshallah, we will partake in that reward, inshallah. In every sense of the word, inshallah, azza wa jal, as long as we have the intention to serve. And we do it sincerely, purely for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this project, it's to sustain and to preserve a site that houses the blessed grave of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. Now, inshallah, this will be an everlasting Sadqatul Jariyah. And as you know, many of you know, the forefathers of the Ba'alwi clan of the Sadat of Anu Alwiya, they started making this journey to Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam once a year to do the ziyarah and give salams to Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. And Ghaliban, it was Al Faqil Muqaddam who started this, Sayyid Muhammad bin Ali Ba'alwi, Faqil Muqaddam Musad al -Azam. And after uh, you know, being overtaken with duties and khidmah of the deen, there was some time that the Habib wasn't able to go there to Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. And then Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam came to him. And he said, Shaykh, if you don't come to us, then we come to you. We can't understand these, these realities of these individuals, whom they are and how they are able to have such deep attachment to prophets. If we want to partake in those blessings, foremost make the intention that inshallah we're going to go there. Inshallah. Oh, say inshallah. inshallah. Say it with your heart, even if not your tongue. Say it inshallah. inshallah. That you're going to go there for ziyarah, visit Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. And if you're not able to go there, then the least we can do is make dua for that place, inshallah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it to reach completion. It gets completed, it gets restored. And the thousands who are flocking there every year to do ziyarah, the, the housing for them, the restoration of that place is done in such a way that it's comfortable for people to go there, inshallah. Inshallah, Sheikh Muhammad Burhan, is gonna give us more detail regarding the donating process, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. And just um, continuing from what Imam Khalid Hafidahullah mentioned, that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam mentions in a hadith, it's a beautiful hadith, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam talks about himself in relation to the other prophets. And he says that. The, uh, the, the likeness and the connection of myself with the other, other prophets is like a beautiful building. And it is beautiful from every aspect except that it has one brick missing. And I am that final brick that b completes that beautiful building. And so the Prophet ﷺ was referring to all of the prophets as being a part of this building. And the only thing that was missing and that was yet to come to finalize it was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam has a beautiful connection with all of the previous Prophets. This is something that you see. That with his brilliance and with his greatness, he doesn't just call to himself. He could have just said, just follow me, love me, respect me. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa has made it from respect towards him and love of him to respect and love all of his brothers in prophecy from Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. And so nobody's iman is complete without believing in them and nobody's love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is complete without loving them. And so they are a part of the Islamic legacy and the Islamic belief and our iman is incomplete without a connection to them. And so alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us this honor and this blessing to partake in an initiative in which we contribute towards the preservation of a sacred site. A site which is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Towards the site of an individual who is from the most closest of those to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of time till the end. In fact, if everybody other than the prophets was to get together, they would never ever reach that station. And so this is a service to those blessed places. And these places are 
elevated in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specific places and specific times and specific people and specific actions which allow a person to gain proximity to him on a level which is unattainable anywhere else. For example, praying in the Kaaba or at the Kaaba. You cannot gain that reward by praying anywhere else. Standing in front of the Prophet ﷺ. You cannot gain that reward anywhere else. And likewise, this is from one of those blessed places of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is needed in this ummah is to rebuild and reconnect and reattach ourselves to the places, the times, the people and the actions. You know, there was a time when the visitation of the Anbiya and the Salihin and partaking in gatherings which commemorated their lives was a part and parcel of the fabric of the community of Muslims throughout the world. That was the routine of the Muslim communities. Their lives and their routines and their years and their calendars revolved around Allah and His Messenger and His Beloved Ones. That's what it was. That has been replaced. Now what we need to do is rebuild that and reconnect to that. And so this project goes towards the renovation of this blessed place. And there is difficulty for people who visit there. You know, we know Hadramaut is one of the hottest places that you can visit. And it becomes very difficult for people to sit there on, for, for long periods of time, to, to spend time there and visit Nabi Allah Hud alayhi salam. And so this, will, this project is about the renovation of those parts that have become uh, in need of immense repair. And those places which are frequented by the people and where people mainly sit when they're giving salams to Nabi Allah or they're sitting in gatherings of knowledge and reminders and the mawlids and the dhikr during the visitation of Nabi Allah And so we, uh, there are different levels of donations that people can make. Uh, we're, we're making dua that everybody inshallah is able to and facilitated to and given the tawfiq to donate at least a thousand pounds. Now that doesn't mean you personally, but it means you take serious responsibility to donate a thousand pounds. So that could mean you donate a thousand pounds and then you collect it from ten people from around you, within your household. You know, your, your relatives, your cousins, your families, your nephews, your nieces, your grandparents. You know, our elders are some of the most generous. You know, your parents. Just think right now in your head... Uh, do I know 10 people that can at least give me a hundred pounds? If the answer is yes, mashallah, put your name down and make an... Mashallah, tabarakallah, we already have brothers who've... Uh, mashallah. The Shaykh here, alhamdulillah, has donated 500 pounds. Mashallah, Allah, Allah barak feek. I'm, I'm not saying this to uh, brush his ego, I'm saying it as a form of encouragement that if other ulama are able to do this, then surely we can do this as well. And inshallah, uh, our beloved Ahmad, Jodri, inshallah, he's going to make an effort to collect a thousand pounds. Because he's got a very big group of friends, mashallah. For that. Sorry, did you as well? Mashallah. And if you're here, inshallah, he's going to do a thousand pounds. Oh, subhanallah. Haji Sabi is going to. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Look, I witness. Mashallah. Allah, barak fiqh. We haven't even finished, and mashallah, brothers already putting their names forward. Mashallah. May Allah reward you. Mashallah, Hizb al Nasr from Leicester, they're going to do a thousand pounds, inshallah. So, what are we on? We're already on five and a half thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, mashallah. Mashallah, Allahu Akbar. And I'm sure on the sister's side, you know, there's always that competition between the brothers and the sisters, and the sisters are always more generous in giving than the brothers. Sometimes because they're spending the money of their Husband. husbands, so it's easier for them to give. That's what it is. Yeah, so mashallah. Yeah. But regardless, whatever it may yeah. be, whatever the reason is, please be be generous in your giving. And those who uh, donate two thousand pounds, there are ten pieces from Riyadhul Jannah like this, yeah, from the carpet that was laid in Riyadhul Jannah, that place that we know is paradise upon earth and so the the first 10 people to pledge and donate 2000 pounds will receive uh, a piece of riyadh al jannah inshallah then the next 50 people will receive a copy of the beautiful hilya al sharif and there's 25 copies of the green version and 25 copies of the cream version there's slight differences in the two but both uh, nonetheless are beautiful and they contain 
the narration of the description of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam again which was a tradition you know the tradition if you if we look in our houses our houses are decorated with televisions and LED lights and pictures and frames of scenes from around the world the the tradition of the Muslims was to adorn their houses with the description of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam they used to decorate their houses with that description and memorize it as well it was the adornment of their houses and their hearts and so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to take a portion. So there's different levels of contribution and there's different levels of uh, Allahu Akbar. Imam Nizal is, is leading by example here, mashallah. He has upped his donation from 500 to 2,000 pounds, mashallah. May Allah increase him in his ilm, in his barakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his family and his children and his lineage until the day of judgment. May Allah keep them steadfast upon the Islam and the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and make them of those who benefit and enter into paradise without any questioning in the company of the Prophets on the Day of Judgment. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah. So if I'm not mistaken, we're up to about six and a half thousand pounds, MashaAllah. And so there's different categories. Everybody should contribute whatever they can, inshallah. And everybody is in accordance to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. But have high himma. Just as we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give to us, we, and we want Him to give with His generosity, we should also give generously to the causes and the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, inshaAllah. So do we have any other contributors who can pledge and ensure that they complete the pledge of donating, inshaAllah? MashaAllah. Ustad Hafiz Zainul Abidin, MashaAllah from... Hizbun Nasr Leicester is going to give 2,000 pounds. Allah Akbar, 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 Allah Akbar. MashaAllah, beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you all and open up your hearts. It seems to be the brothers from down south seem to be giving everything. Come on, northerners. MashaAllah. Leicester, London. Aap hai kaha? Oldham people, brothers from Manchester, Oldham. What county is this? Lancashire. Lancashire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Imam Khalid's opened up a bit of a competition here, inshallah, between the southerners ah, and the northerners. Oh, so where are the northerners now, inshallah? Remember one thing, look, genuinely, remember one thing. You know, when you make the intention to give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we can tell you from personal experience, Uqsum billah, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sends it. Allah sends it from ways and means you had not even imagined. We've had deadlines where in a matter of an hour, two hours, we've had to raise 10,000 pounds. And we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to make an effort yourself and then you rely upon Allah and we've exceeded that. Our uh, project for the million pound project, uh, Greensville, Olive Mount, we had... Um, to exceed 7,000 pounds or something in a matter of what? How long did we have? 24 hours. 24 hours, 7,000 pounds. Where do we get it from? We're all working people. Alhamdulillah. You know, we, we work, we pay our bills and we feed our family, feed ourselves and that's it. Is it not? Alhamdulillah. But you know when you have reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sends it. Allah sends it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرُزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Those who have fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we talk about taqwa, fear for Allah, it's not only fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salah, roza, zakat and hajj, it's for other things too. And if we make the intention um, of giving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, he says, Allah, He finds a way or an exit point for you to fulfill that promise that you have made. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who provides. He is khayrul raziqin. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a good intention that you make, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always finds a way uh, for you to fulfill that promise, inshaAllah. So, 
as Sheikh Burhan was reminding us that if people give two thousand pounds or donate two thousand pounds, inshallah, inshallah, then they will get a piece of the Riyadul Jannah, inshallah, azza wa jal. We also have the Hilya Sharif, as Sheikh mentioned. So you take this. We also have the Hilya Sharif, as the Sheikh mentioned, that if people make hundred pounds, Hilya, for thousand pounds, inshallah, the Hilya Sharif, the description of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Wa 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 now, if you make a pledge, it does not mean that you have to give it today. Okay, you make a pledge, meaning inshallah, I will give in the future. You give it when you are able to, inshallah. You give it when you are able to. But making a pledge, having an intention to perform a good deed, especially when it comes to serving mankind, and this in reality is serving Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. This is serving the Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only return it to you tenfold or even more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you in such a way and such manners that you had not comprehended. Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, the ability to donate in his way, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we be, we be sincere in our cause in serving the prophets and messengers, inshallah. Inshallah, I was going through the uh, biography of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem recently. And I came across a beautiful uh, narration and that Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem was in a gathering and somebody came asking in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a poor person, he asked. And so Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem sent Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala an. And he says to him, go to your blessed mother and ask her for a coin. And so he goes and say that Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she only had six coins with her. And she had already told Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem that this is all we have and this is how much we need to feed the family. This is what we need to purchase the ingredients to feed the family. This is all we have. So he goes back to Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem. And then Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ajul Kareem says, Go back to your blessed mother and tell her that we have a higher trust in what Allah has promised than what we have in our hand. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Man ja'a bil hasana, falahu ashra amthaluha. That whoever gives or whoever does a good deed, Allah will multiply it ten times. So Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha sends all six coins, leaves nothing in the house. Nothing left. In that same gathering, before Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem can stand from the gathering, a man walks past and he says, I'm selling this camel, who wishes to purchase it? Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem says, how much is it? He says, it's 140 coins. Sayyidina Ali says, tie it there, I'll purchase it from you on the agreement that I will pay you in installments. Man agreed, he goes, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy with that, take it. 140 coins. A short while later, a man comes past and he says, whose camel is this? This beautiful camel, I wish to purchase it. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem says, it's mine. He says, how much is it? He says, for you it's 200 coins. It now belongs to him, he can sell it for whatever he wishes. So he says, a bargain, I'll buy it. Gives him 200 coins straight away. Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajhul Kareem paid the man 140 that he owed, the 60 he sent to his wife, Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha. And she says, where did this come from? And Sayyidina Ali says, did I not mention to you the ayah of Allah? Allah multiplies it 10 times. You gave six, Allah returns 60. These are real examples. These are not made up stories for fundraisers. These are not made up stories. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. We have some brothers here from Derby, mashallah. What we're going to do as a group from Derby, is on behalf of Derby, don't worry. Mashallah. Mashallah. You know, there's a. We'll uh, make a pledge and we'll collect from the people of Derby. Mashallah. Inshallah. Very generous. Uh, Brother Abid oh. was just about to stand up and make a pledge from <laughs> Derby. 
Mashallah tabarakallah he's still sitting I'm not going to stop talking about you until you stand up <laughs> so just do it I'll put his hand up don't, don't don't make him stand no no mashallah. I want him to stand no, he's a big man mashallah no no put your hand up even more even more even more <laughs> mashallah tabarakallah so uh, abid has made a pledge Yeah all right I know he's from Derby all right from da- for, for the yeah. people of Derby for the people of Derby after mentioning it two three times just because we've mentioned Leicester two three times from Derby Abid from Derby Abid Derby mashallah tabarakallah inshallah is you're going to do some fundraising for this project in Derby inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and accept it from you I'm make just curious make people make dua for Derby Allahumma iftah lahum fatuh al-arifin ya rabbal alamin as long as the people of Derby make dua for us as well inshallah ya rabb ya rabb I'm just curious to see what, uh, what other cities are people here from today You're old am aren't you mashallah we've got Leicester Derby Oldham how do you say what city are you from Oldham mashallah tabarakallah and Oldham and yourself Oldham is there anyone who's not from Oldham apart from Leicester and Derby Allahu akbar mashallah Allahu akbar mashallah tabarakallah jazakumullahu khairan asal jaza 1000 pounds there from manchester mashallah tabarakallah see what's your name sufi ibrahim sahab mashallah tabarakallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept you from you jazakumullahu khairan do we have any updates from the sisters we're still discussing and the benefits of donating and i guarantee you sisters must have collected something like 20 grand <laughs> yeah they must have just and then when they get home they're going to tell their husbands there be sazar gay ma sha allah tabarakallah see the jawab is finding out now the reason they're not answering the phone is because they're busy donating ma sha allah ma sha allah tabarakallah we also like to everyone to specifically make dua for qari sahab's mother who donated mashallah qari bilal's mother who donated make dua for her as well inshallah and brother who uh, donated 2000 pounds please make dua for his daughter whose name is fatima subhanallah make dua for her inshallah azza wa jal and dua for every single one of you here genuinely sincerely habib umar has already made dua for every single one of us and we will make dua for one another inshallah remember dua uh, made in the absence of another believer the even angels say ameen sayyidna uh, sahib ratib al attas habib umar bin abd rahman al attas rahimahum allah ta'ala wa nafa'an allah bi allah make his benefit through him he used to say that if you want all of your duas to be accepted for this world and the hereafter you want to be protected from hatred jealousy envy from the evils of this world from the evils of people from the evil intentions of people you want to be successful in all of your matters constantly make dua for others and you will be protected and successful yourself there's no need for you to make dua for yourself then now this isn't a ruling in the deen that you're not allowed to make dua for yourself this was one of the, an insight from one of the awliya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said al habib umar bin abdur rahman al atas the one who compiled ratib al atas allah make us benefit through his words inshallah ya rab those that are online can donate as well uh, if you go to the green gate trust website and you can make a donation through there if you are um, somebody who is eligible for gift aid please do select the gift aid option as well there is complete transparency uh there is complete transparency in this project all the money is donated to a, an account online all of the money goes there and there is there is uh all that money then will be transferred for this project inshallah and people will see the fruits of it you will see the transformation inshallah masha we've just had another donation mashallah sister Juwayria Shamsuddin Juwayria Shamsuddin 1000 euros from Chicago from Mashallah. Chicago Mashallah tabarakallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from her and Amen. our young imam uh, Sidi Muhammad Azhar Umar Mashallah tabarakallah he has uh, pledged 2000 pounds Mashallah tabarakallah Malawi, he's, yeah. from, he's from Leicester Mashallah <laughs> yeah <laughs> From Leicester, Leicester. From, Leicester. Which, which city, Sidi? Leicester. Where do you live? Mawlana Sahib, where do you live? Derby. Leicester, mashallah. <laughs> Imam Sahib, where do you live? Leicester. Leicester, mashallah. Leicester. 
ہاں ہاں سن سن کر بیرے ہو گئے تم ہاں لیسٹ ماشاء اللہ تبارک اللہ اللہ یحفظ کو امام صاحب ماشاء اللہ تبارک اللہ سو برادرز انشاء اللہ وی نوٹ گونٹ بی ٹیکنگ ٹو مچ ٹائم ناؤ وی ایم ٹو کلوز سون ود دا دعا as the people have got to travel back to the cities they've come from and there's other events taking place as well which i'm sure people need to get to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not allow us to leave from here except that he has forgiven us ya rab and allah has pardoned all of us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites our hearts upon the truth of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik sallam we pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the efforts of qari bilal and his whole team and all of the muslim ummah who are donating for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are making efforts for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from our teachers and our elders in particular our sheikh habib umar bin hafiz allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a long life and put blessings in his ilm and his life and make us benefit through him in this world and the hereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to serve the ahl al-bayt allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to serve the sahaba allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to serve the anbiya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to serve one another allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people whom he is pleased with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us iman at the time of death ya rab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to gaze upon the countenance of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sahbihi wasallam at the time of death in our graves and may we be dealt with him on the day of judgment may he intercede for us and allah accept that intercession and enter us into jannah al firdaus al a'la li kulli niyyatin saliha bi niyyati al qabul wa hab lana kullu rasul bi dhikri maulid rasul sallallahu alayhi rabbi wa salamun alayhi wa ala ali wa bi siri alhamdulillah my little nephew here uh, adam sitting at the back there and his father at the back there and this and his wife on the other side there they have donated 4000 pound mashallah and they've requested that we make dua for their children inshallah for good education and good health inshallah allah allah akbar tamam inshallah wa bisir surat al fatiha ila hadrat an-nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam al fatiha Inshallah, we'll conclude with the supplication. Those who obtained the booklet when they entered, it's on page 23, inshallah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alih. Sallallahu alayhi. Wa laqad ashartu li na'ti man awsafuhu tuhil quluba tuhayyiju al-ashjana. Sallallahu alayhi. الله قد اثنى عليه فما يساوي القول منا او يكون ثنانا لكن حبا في السرائر قد دعا لمديح صفوة ربنا وحدانا وإذ امتزجنا بالمودة ها هنا نرفع ويدي فقرنا ورجانا للواحد الأحد العلي لاهنا متوسل لينا بمن اليه دعانا مختاره وحبيبه وصفيه زين الوجود به الاله حبانا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا بالمصطفى قبلنا اجب دعوانا انت لنا انت لنا يا ذخرنا في هذه الدنيا وفي اخرانا اصلح لنا الاحوال واغفر ذنبنا ولا تؤاخذ ربي ان اخطانا يا الله واسرك بنا في نهج طه المصطفى ثبت على قدم الحبيب خطانا يا الله ارنا بفضل منك طلعه احمد في بهجه عين الرضا ترعانا يا الله واربط به في كل حال حبلنا وحبال من ود ومن ولانا يا الله 
والمحسنين ومن أجاب نداءنا وذو الحقوق وطالبا أوصانا والحاضرين وساعيا في جمعنا ها نحن بين يديك أنت ترانا ولقد رجوناك فهقق سؤلنا واسمع بفضلك يا سميع دعانا وانصر بنا سنة طاها في بقاء الأرض واقمع كل من عادانا وانظر إلينا واسقنا كأس الهنا واشفي وعافي عاجلا مرضانا واقضي لنا الحاجات واحسن ختمنا عند الممات واصلح النقبانا يا رب واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا رب واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا رب واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في دارك الفردوس يا رجوانا بالمصطفى صلى عليه وآله ما حركت ريح الصباغ صانا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا من أرسلك الله تعالى رحمة للعالمين ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى نصحاب رسول الله الأجمعين آمين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيم إن شاء الله my nephew who is like a son to me He's going to be getting married in a couple of days, inshallah. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him and his bride to be with khair and lutf and afiyah. And inshallah, to show happiness at a joyous occasion, inshallah, the family will be donating something as well, inshallah, azza wa dal. Mashallah, that's the groom to be there, mashallah. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him sa'ad and felicity, inshallah. We're going to conclude with, inshallah, Qari Sahab, who is going to come on. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam barak sallam has said, man lam yashkurul nas la yashkurullah. Those who do not thank mankind are not thankful to Allah. So Qari Sahab would like to say a few words, inshallah. Mute yours, though. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. بالعالمين الحمد لله وفي نعمه الكافي مزيدة يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد مفتاح باب رحمة الله عدد ما حمل صلاة وسلام دائما بدوام ملكنا وعلى آله وصحبه عدد بسرة ألف مرة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, just want to say Jazakallah khair for every single person who turned up today. Thank you so much. All the scholars, the habaib, everyone who's donated. Uh, today has just been unbelievable. Uh, <clears throat> this morning we didn't even know if Habib Umar was going to come to. Subhanallah. And it's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we just found out after Fajr. Habib had a very big event today which Habib cancelled. Uh, subhanallah for especially facilitating uh, things for everyone who's online all over Europe all around the world have you cancelled one of the biggest events um, um, that is taking place here in Rabi al-Awwal 
and we are so grateful to uh, the Habaib that they took their time off, both Habib Qadim and uh, uh, Habib Umar bin Hafib. They both left the event and came on today, and we couldn't be more thankful enough to them. And the speech, subhanAllah, which is absolutely amazing here, even Habib Qadim, Sheikh Musa, me, everyone is here, uh, literally in tears. Uh, and truly, Habib just hit our hearts. Uh, subhanallah. So, Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for attending today. Everyone online, may Allah bless you and reward you in abundance. Every single person who's donated today, may Allah reward you in abundance. Uh, this project, uh, we're doing so many projects here in Yemen with malnourished children, with uh, opening wells, bakeries food distributions, but this project, we didn't even think that we were ever going to have the opportunity to do a project like this. It's beyond me, it's beyond Greengate Trust, it's beyond all of us. This is a very, very uh, special project, which uh, personally for me, subhanAllah, I'm just glad to be a part of it. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has blessed us with this opportunity to serve Sayyidina Hud al-Islam, serve the Habaib here, and serve the people um, uh, all around Sayyidina Hud al-Islam who are going to be going visiting Sayyidina Hud al-Islam, the guests of Sayyidina Hud al-Islam. So Jazakallah khair, every single person who's donated and who's contributing, who's supporting this project, uh, the bulk, the, even the charities here, we've all come together and we've been given different, different projects. The bulk of the project, Alhamdulillah, uh, has been passed on to us. Inshallah, we've got one project which we're going to be completing this year, which we have, we've appealed for now. And we've got even uh, another project in Sayyidina Hud al-Islam, which is going to be next year, which is far greater than the project which we're doing now. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you all in abundance. And thank you so much for coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, our beloved Sheikh Imam Khalid, uh, Sheikh Burhan Khandia, and all the um, Nasheed uh, artists and all, all, the, uh, all the brothers who have come all the way from uh, Leicester and Derby and from all over England. Um, Lil Haris, Allah bless him too. And all the organizers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all in them. Uh, brother Nadim, his, his father, Uncle Yusuf, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all uh, for helping us uh, put this event together and giving this beautiful, beautiful, uh, special thing which came from Habib today throughout the whole world and into people's hearts. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for all attending. Imam Khalid, Jazakallah khair. Sheikh Burhan, Jazakallah khair. Please keep us in your du'as, inshallah ta'ala, and keep watching our videos. Uh, definitely, inshallah, uh, um, inshallah, uh, come onto our pages, inshallah, and see our work which is taking place here, and especially this project, which is beyond us. We don't even have a say in this project in uh, Sayyidina Hud al-Islam. We're told what to do, and inshallah ta'ala, that's what we're doing. Uh, the uh, Khuddam, the Habaib, uh, they are in charge of this project. We are just doing our khidmah as much as we can. And it's not only us as just one charity, everyone has come together in this blessed project. Um, because it's not, this is not anything got to do with one charity. This is way beyond this, beyond charity work too. So Jazakallah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you in abundance. Forgive us for any shortcomings. And definitely, inshallah ta'ala, keep supporting the Yemen project, especially uh, the Sayyidina Hud al-Islam, Nabi Allah Hud project, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قد كفاني علم ربي من سؤالي واختياري يا الله فدعائي واختياري شاهد لي بافتقاري يا الله فلهذا سري أدعو في يساري وعساري يا الله أنا عبد صار فخري ضمن فخري واضطراري يا الله قد كفاني علم ربي من سؤالي واختياري يا الله يا إلهي ومالكي أنت تعلم كيف حالي 
علي وبما قد حل قلبي من هموم واشتغالي فتداركني بلطف منك يا مولى الموالي يا كريم الوجه غثني قبل أن يفلص لباري قد كفاني علم ربي من سؤالي واختياري يا سريع الغوث غوثا منك يدركني سريعا يهزم العسرى ويأتي بالذي أرجو جميعا يا الله يا قريبا يا مجيبا يا عليما يا سميعا يا الله قد تحققت بعجزي وخضوعي وانكساري يا الله قد كفاني علم ربي من سؤالي واختياري يا الله لم أسل بالباب واقف فرح من ربي وقوفي يا الله وبواد الفضل عاكف فعدم ربي عكوفي يا الله ولحسن ظني لازم فهو خلي وحليفي يا الله وأنيسي وجليسي طول ليلي والنهاري يا الله قد كفاني علم ربي من سؤالي واختياري يا الله عجتان في النفس يا رب وقتها يا خير قادي عجتان في النفس يا رب وقتها يا خير قادي عجتان في النفس يا رب وقتها يا خير قادي وأرح سري وقلبي من لطاها والشواذ بسرور وحبور وإذا ما كنت راضي فالهنا والبسط حالي والشعار ودثاري قد كفاني علم ربي من سعالي واختياري فدعائي وابتهالي شاهد لي بافتقاري صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فضلي سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين في كل ناحية تقبل الله منا ومن مسار المرزاق Zakum Allah.